So we're going to be going over some of the immunoglobins as well as the major histocompatibility complex. First, we're going to start with the immunoglobins. So there are five different classes of, of these, and they're distinguished from each other by IgM, D, G, A, and E. Uh, their differences are mainly due in part to the variable re region, and that binds this, the specific antigen that they're responding to, and we call this the hypervariable re region. Um, this region can un undergo somatic hypermutation, which causes the B cells to generate those genes at an increased rate. So that leads to an altered affinity for the activating antigen. Uh, this affinity can be higher or lower, and it, this causes kind of an, an, an antigen competition within the germinal center of those B cells. And the B cells that cannot compete, um, they are not going to be able to leave. So instead, those, uh, those antibodies that emerge always will have a higher affinity for the um, and antigen than the than their original population, and we call that affinity maturation. And then moving on, um, a major part of T cell recognition is by the major histocompatibility compatibility complex, which I will call MHC from now on. Uh, this can be broken down into two classes, class one and class two. Um, MHCs have two main functions. So they selectively bind and produce peptides and present those peptides to the corresponding T cell receptor that's correct. Uh, their, their activity is upregulated by peptides um, to the corresponding T cell receptors and um, cyt cyt cytokines. Uh, cytokines are created by the body when uh, your body undergoes an uh, attack from an invading pathogen. So MHC class one is upregulated by interferons alpha, beta, and gamma. And MHC class two is upregulated by only interferon gamma. So it's important to note here that the MHC classes differ from individuals within a population, and this is due to either um, polygenicity or polymorphism. Um, polygenicity is when MHC class one and class two genes are coded by multiple independent genes. And uh, poly polymorphism is simply the existence of more than one stable form of the genes within a population. So an example of that would be the human blood type. So um, the, ant the, ant the antigens of like regular human blood cells are either A, B, or O. And that's due to polymorphism within a population. So within humans, the MHC gene is known as the human leukocyte antigen. So we call that HLA. Uh, HLA also is like MHC. It has two main classes. The class one re region has HLA, A, B, and C. Uh, those genes are highly po poly polymorphic and they have a lot of different forms. The, the class one region also has a much less polymorphic region. Um, those genes are involved in the presentation of an antigen onto na na natural killer cells and the prevention of fetus rejection. And those genes are HLA, E, F, and G. The class two region of HLA um, also codes for the polymorphic class two mo molecules. So we that's going to be HLA, DP, DQ, and DR. Uh, this class is a little bit weird, but each class has a subregion of genes, either alpha or beta, which codes for the alpha or beta chains of the molecules. So HLA class one and class two genes are expressed on individual chromosomes, and this is called a halotype. Uh, these genes are genetically inherited in these units. So for example, HLA class one on the father's chromosome would be halotype one in the resulting offspring. So, and, uh, so like the HLA um, class two would be like uh, halotype three on the resulting offspring from the mother. So um, due in part to like genetic recombination, these halotypes of offspring differ from parents. And so basically the child uh, will be uh, expressing different halotypes from each parent. So there's not an exact 100% copy paste. There's gonna be some differences between there in order to create those unique genes for the children. And those, of course, are um, 
our mo molecules as a whole.